Welcome to RPG Dojo, where we discuss the theory of game development. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about designing good side quests. If you're looking to increase your skills with or just generally talk about RPG Maker, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload some epic content. So you want to add side quests to your game. Good! Side quests are mandatory. Not that you have to do them, but in RPGs, side quests are a staple, and your players would probably feel ripped off if they didn't get a whole swath of side quests. So what we'll do today is we're going to discuss the theory of what makes a good side quest, and then we're going to jump into the RPG Maker engine and show some examples of side quests done right. Firstly, and probably most importantly, I think I say most importantly so much on this channel it's lost its meaning. Your side quests shouldn't supplement the main plot. What I mean by that is your players shouldn't get to a point in the game where they have to complete a bunch of side quests to be able to proceed further in the game. It's in the name, side quests, you do them on the side. They should be able to be bypassed completely if the player so wishes. On a related note, side quests shouldn't subsidise the main plot. I'm looking at you, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Your side quests aren't just there to fill in the hour count of your game. So you can say your RPG game has 100 bazillion gazillion hours in it. Side quests should serve a purpose, not just to fill hours within the game. Important to note, while they should expand on the game world, it shouldn't be necessary for your players to be able to complete them to be able to understand the main plot of the game. It shouldn't be there to fill in plot, because that's what the main plot's for. If your players can't understand the main plot of your game because they didn't play side quests, then you have a problem on your hands. That's bad game design. Let's take a look at some examples of what different types of quests are. A fetch quest. A fetch quest is where players are given a task to go retrieve something, so say retrieve a flower from the top of a mountain and return it to the person who ordered the retrieval. A kill quest. A kill quest is where players are commissioned by someone local to go hunt down and kill a monster, returning to collect their reward. A delivery quest. A delivery quest is where players are told to take something from one location to another location, and they should expect reward when they get to the next location. An investigation quest. An investigation quest is where players are given clues and they have to solve a puzzle, such as a murder mystery quest where they have to find the killer or find the missing child. We're going to go in depth into a fetch quest and a kill quest and just look at some different ways we can make them more engaging and write them better. The reason we're going to be looking at these quests is because they are the most common within video games. A priest has asked you to retrieve some holy water from three magical sites located within a magical temple. The characters make their way through the old temple and collect the holy water, maybe even fight a boss along the way. They then return to the village where the priest asks them to collect the holy water. You hand over the holy water for a reward. That was all well and good, but we can make that ten times better. <coughs> You enter a town, and a few of the townspeople mention in passing that the priest has a sick wife. You go and talk to the priest, and he begs you to retrieve some holy water from an ancient temple. You get to the temple, and there is a magical door that's locked, asking you three questions to test your faith. If you answer correctly, the door will open and you can travel through the temple. You must find the first pool of holy water. Once you fill up your flask, a door behind it opens. The players travel through the temple to the second, and then the final pool of holy water. When they get to the final pool of holy water, there is a young man filling his flask with the last of the holy water. After mentioning that his town is suffering from a sickness, and that this holy water will save them, he makes his escape using a smoke bomb. The players go to a town where everyone is coughing as they speak. Upon entering the church, they find the priest berating a young man. They find the priest berating the young man, telling him that the holy water won't work because they don't need holy water, instead they need a scroll of restoring, and they are all out. A party member mentions that the priest in the other town might have one for trade, and they would be willing to trade for the holy water. The players head back to the first town and hand over the two vials of holy water, mentioning that there is a sick town looking to trade a third vial of holy water for a scroll of restoring. The priest agrees and gives the players a scroll of restoring to trade for the holy water. The players head back to the town of sick people, and after handing over the scroll of restoration, they give you the holy water, which you then take back to the priest, who rewards you with some potions, some antidotes, as well as a holy relic. 
If the players ever visit the sick town again, everyone there has recovered. Thankful for your help. They give you cheap items and weapons, as well as a cheap night at the inn for one gold. Writing it in this way does a few things for this simple fetch quest. It expands it beyond just a simple fetch quest into a small enclosed storyline within itself. Instead of just having a simple go here, collect this return element, you also now have the fact that the players have to go, collect some holy water, go to a town because the last of the holy water was stolen, find out the town's sick, travel back to the priest to get a scroll of restoring, travel back to the town, and then cure everyone in the town with the scroll of restoring. It's more than just go here, get that, come back. It means that your players have a meaningful impact on the world and the NPC interactions. If you would come by the priest and the man in this sick town without doing the quest, they wouldn't have nearly as much meaning now that you've done this quest and you've helped the sick town. There's much more meaning to this town now and character within the NPCs as opposed to just a sick boy complaining that his town is sick and a priest wondering what to do with all the sick people. Now you have that story attached specifically to those NPCs. You've given them life, you've given them character. Next up we're going to do a kill quest. To do this, simply, a local tavern owner hires the party to go and kill a bear that has been harassing caravans in the forest. The players go to the forest, find a bear attacking a caravan, they kill the bear, then head back into town for their reward. That's okay, but let's level this up. The local tavern owner tells the players of a bear that's been attacking caravans along the forest path. He sent some people out to fight it before, but the bear is stronger than a normal bear. Normal weapons don't hurt it, and magic only slightly works against it. He's offering a 100 gold bounty on the bear for anyone brave enough to risk it. One of the locals claims to have damaged the bear, but no one believes him. The players consult with the local who claims to have damaged the bear. He lets the players know that he stabbed the bear with his grandmother's silver dagger, and the bear ran off with the dagger, but it was bleeding. The bear ran in the direction of a mountain. The players can then ask the blacksmith about silver weapons. He says he can forge them if the players can get him some silver. The players have to go get the silver from a small cave nearby. The blacksmith forges silver weapons, and the players can go and hunt the bear. They find a good location to ambush the bear. Upon seeing the bear walk across the road, they notice the bear has magical runes on its back. One of the characters mentions that a dispel scroll might be able to weaken it. Now the players can choose to attack the bear now, or wait and head back into town to buy a dispel scroll. If the players choose to head back into town to find a dispel scroll, then when they come back to hunt the bear, the bear's already attacked again, killing another caravan. After the players fight and kill the bear, they can go back into town and collect their reward, but they now have silver weapons and the knowledge that some strong monsters might have a rune on them that can be dispelled. We've just taken two side quests and expanded on them so that they're not just another side quest, but they're a story in and of themselves. These can be bypassed by the players completely, but if the players do choose that they want to do these side quests, they're going to be rewarded not only with the rewards of the side quest, but fun storytelling, engaging storytelling. And while I have you captivated right now, it would mean a lot if you scrolled down and hit the subscribe button, as well as the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload any more videos. Also, while you're down there, consider giving the like button a bit of a tickle. In the last episode of RPG Dojo I was talking about how we would passed 150 and we're well on the way to 200. Well now we've passed 350 and we're well on the way to 400, so that's awesome. Thank you for all the support and keep up the momentum, it really means a lot. And again, let me know in the comments uh, down below if you like this style of video so I can keep designing them for you. I'm also going to keep making the other RPG Maker content that I've been making regarding tips and tricks, etc. Etc. By the way, you guys are awesome. I hope you're all staying safe during these trying times. I will see you in the next video and in the next episode of RPG Dojo. And I have to solve a mystery or a puzzle or. Oh, God. Upon seeing the bear walk across the road.